Hey there, so today we're gonna talk about how we installed underground power from the street all the way up to our house. It was about, how long was it? About 650 feet. About 650 feet. So we had to do digging the trench, putting the power in, the whole nine yards. You're gonna see it all. We'll put timestamps in, um, in the description section if you wanna to jump to a specific part. What else? Um, Oh, and always check with your local codes before you attempt to do something crazy like this. Right. Did we say it was underground? Did I say it was underground? Underground power. Did I say that? I don't know. We did now. Underground power. Let's get into it. All right, welcome back. So again, this video is gonna be about how we put in underground power. And I think it takes, there's probably about four basic steps you had to do. One, you had to clear the area to be able to put in underground power. Uh, two, you have to dig a trench. So you have a place to put the wires. You have to put in a conduit uh, that the wires will go into. And you also have to then pull the wires through the conduit. So we're gonna outline those steps and how, how we did that. Right. Strictly speaking, the conduit's not necessary in no. some scenarios. So you'd want to check your local ordinances or if uh, your your power supplier has specific requirements, sometimes you can directly lay right. the, power, the lines right in the ground. Right. So we chose to do a conduit. We ended up by having... So we needed to run two separate lines up our property. One was for electricity and the second one was for our cable because we also wanted to have cable. We live in the middle of the woods and right. we didn't want to do satellite. We wanted cable. So in this first slide, uh, what he did is I drew a line on the ground here and uh, that uh, marked out where we thought we were going to dig the trench and before we dug, we dialed 811, which is uh, dig safe. the number the dig number for dig safe here in New England. And it's also free, they come out for free and they'll tell you if there's any underground services that you need to watch out for when you're digging. Right, you don't wanna dig and hit a natural gas line. Yeah, you don't wanna dig. Or, or your neighbor's underground yeah. power. That yeah, and it's free, so there's no reason not yeah. to do it. So they came out and they cleared the property. Right. For... And they spray painted on our ground here that says that there were no services. Yep, so we, we were good to go. Like. Ready? Keep moving, yep. Okay, I'll What's move this? out of the way. Handbook of requirements, requirements for electrical right. installations. So our our electrical supplier had a, had a handbook <laughs> that shows basically what you need to do in order to put yep. put in underground power or put in put in oh, uh, pole power. Over power, yeah. Yeah, overhead power. Yep. So we we opened up this book and we found uh, which which things we need. Nice? Yeah, keep on going. So this is kind of an inter interesting chart. This tells you, depending on what type of service you want, uh, 100 amp, 150 amp, or 200 amp service, mm -hmm. and how far you're going, uh, it tells you what size cable, what size cable you're gonna need. Oh, okay. So uh, we, we are... did 200 amp power, so we're over here, and we did aluminum. You can do copper, but it's way, way more expensive, especially if you're going a long distance. And, uh, right, so we wanted 200 amp service, and we were going up to 660 feet, which is about how far we wanted to go. So it told us that we need to put in two different lines of 350 MCM cable. So your uh, electrical yeah, uh, company, company might... will probably have something like this or be able to tell you what, what you need. And the other thing it tells you over here is what size conduit you need to put in. So it says we need to put in four inch conduit to do yeah. that. Yep. So, so this is secondary service. There's many different ways of doing this. You can you can go overhead and overhead for us, mm -hmm. we got an estimate it was fifteen dollars a foot. Mm -hmm. So we're six hundred something feet in the back. So it'd be about ten thousand dollars to go overhead. And they also said they would they would pull underground, mm -hmm. but they only pull underground up to four hundred feet. So then we if we want to do that we would have to go four hundred feet underground. And to do that you actually need to put in two conduits because they put in a backup uh, line, mm -hmm. and then they put in transformer pad. 400 feet up, oh, yeah. up your driveway and then you have to continue on from there and do secondary power up to your house right we didn't want to do that and it's going to be more expensive so we, we didn't do that so we went with this gigantic cable that's just it's just a you'll see it. it's a monster cable yeah but it would actually end up being the cheapest solution to get up here yeah plus with the overhead we had to we would have had to have cut down way more trees right you need to put in the poles you need like 10 foot i think clearance, clearance on either side, on either side. Poles, and that's and a lot of trees when you're talking yeah. about a 20 foot path of the woods exactly we live in the middle of the woods we didn't want to cut down any more trees also so we chose to go underground plus we do live in an area where there are blizzards and trees fall and branches fall sure. and so if a tree falls, at least we don't have to worry about our power going out from our own property. Right. 
What's this? So this is uh, an example. They give you some run rules for how you want to how you want oh, to run something. So here's an example of the weather head up on a pole. You come down the pole and you uh, they have like these different different depths on the ground. You're supposed to be when you cut your trench. You're supposed to backfill with like clean clean dirt. Mm -hmm. And then there's supposed to be like a way for it to drain over here. And then you come up on the side of your house up from underground. And you put in your meter. That's it. And this is basically almost exactly what we did, except for this length here like, is like 600, 600 feet away. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good. So, so, yeah, so we rented this thing. Yeah, so step two was digging a trench. Yeah, this thing was ridiculous. I mean, when I when I went to get a trencher, I was thinking I was going to get something that was pretty, I don't know, reasonably sized. <laughs> but this thing is like, it's like 15 feet long. It's like driving a car. Yeah. It's ridiculous, but it's so not wide. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a four-inch four inch trencher. So it digs a four-inch hole. And um, as we said earlier, one of the conduits is four-inch. The other conduit is right. two-inch. But a four inch conduit is bigger than four inch, and also the tr it, this trencher doesn't. This I trencher mean, doesn't cut that wide. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, it's not we that thought. we didn't think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We thought we thought it was going to do it, but it it did it. No. It didn't. So we ended up by doing we using rent, this yeah. four inch trencher, and then the we ended up by line. putting the two inch cable in right. there. Instead. And then we dug a second trench for the four You'll inch conduit. Yeah. So here we are. It actually. It took pretty well. It, 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 it went through the quick. roots. Yeah. It went through. You can yeah, see where the straight through roots. It's like a giant chainsaw. just cuts into the ground. Yeah. So here we are. We're just going up uh, on the Our side of the driveway that we had already put in. Well, put in mostly, I guess. Keep it, it was roughed in. Yep. Well, that's a good picture. As you can see, it's very nice. It's, it's good cut, but there's no way a four-inch tube was going to fit in there, but we didn't know right. that too. And we're time. digging down about, I think we had to be under two feet, so we're digging down the better part of yes. three feet here. Yeah. And uh, the other thing that... I guess we'll show you later, but after you lay your conduit down, you have to fill it back in with dirt yes. halfway and then put in uh, the tape The tape, and that says electrical line Caution. buried below or whatever Caution. it is. To make sure no one else digs into it. You're yeah, digging. Keep going. I'm doing a great job. He's, doing, he's wearing the same outfit actually today. He, this is what he wears. I did it earlier today like, actually. I know. He was he was just digging, digging, digging out there. So still digging. Yep. This is about 400 feet oh, in. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to. It doesn't matter. That's fine. That was about 400 feet in. So here we can, we're kind of laying out the conduit. Uh, up the driveway, and the, this two-inch conduit is pretty flexible, so yeah. we have a little bit of turns here and there, and, and we just kind of went with it. Yep. And f you know, for most intents and purposes, like little, a little bit of bending here and there going up the driveway wasn't okay. wasn't an issue at all. We just pulled right through. Yeah. So. So this is actually what actually we're almost done at this point. We had finished oh. this section. We had laid the dirt back in. We put in the tape, and then we put the dirt over the top. And we're putting in these flags because we know that we yes. have to come back through here again okay. to dig another trench for the thing now maybe this ground is so soft that we couldn't we didn't think we could dig the whole trench one time you can't get an excavator in there yeah really uh because the ground is so soft so um but it's possible that if your land is drier or oh yeah well sure. drained that you might have been able to just use like an excavator and could done it all at the same yeah. time and then just measured out and spaced out your two separate conduit poles but right. we didn't have and there that. are requirements there for how how far, far apart, apart they, they need to be. be i think it's like two feet or something but they can't be they can't be right next to each other because yeah. of crosstalk and stuff right yes yeah, so we put the flags in i think i i think that was my job for you did a great job i did a great job oh, okay so now we have to dig right the four inch conduit so, Right. Trench. So we're going through the bog here. So we got this guy. We rented something else. And in some some places, you know, it was really narrow. And actually, these tracks actually slide in. Yes. So sometimes we have to slide those in to get between like the driveway and like a tree or something because the trees are actually only like less than ten feet off the road. Yeah. And plus it was through a swamp. So here we are. We're digging another one, and this this actually goes really really slow. This bucket's maybe it's, it's less tiny. than a foot wide. It's tiny. But it doesn't have a lot of power. It can dig down a lot. So I know that we had rented it for a weekend, but mm -hmm. they told us we can only use it eight hours. And in eight hours, I made it about 300 feet. Was it really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, and we used that entire eight hours, and then uh, we ended up doing the rest of it with the with the backhoe. Yeah, you'll see that. Yeah, so that was just to get the plug that was really hard to get, because it's a very light machine. Right, right, right. Yep. Whoops. Oh, look, you get a video. Look at this. This is Alex rocking the uh, yep, a little rocking guy. the excavator. Then one of the kids... Yeah, you gotta let well, the kids have some fun time. Yeah, they the have to, especially when you rent something like that. <laughs> you know? Oh, oh look, here we go. Here's some more kids. Here's some more kids. We, um, well, part of building your own house and part of putting in your own electrical power and part of everything is, uh, especially when you, if you have a family, we have three boys. Right. You have to keep them occupied at some point when you're doing this. So we would have we spent 
tens of thousands of dollars on a babysitter. Oh, yeah. It would have been hundred thousand. Yeah, they're they're actually really. I yeah. used to play like this. They made a store here and yes. let me use the excavator for a little, a little bit. bit. <laughs> yeah, they, they kept themselves <laughs> Don't busy. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> no, no. But they kept themselves busy. We were really lucky that they really like to be outdoors and they build their own things and sure. work well. So and that is the four inch conduit. Again, we were laying it all out to make sure we had, um, I guess it's just ready to go before right. we had to glue it. Would you show how to glue it? No, nah, it's just it's regular can... PVC and. Uh, although it's on the ground and it will leak, I don't know anybody who's going to say that's not going to leak because it just it just tends to get water in it. But the cable you put in there is underground cable; it can get wet. So if you get water inside your pipe, it's not the end of the world. But we did glue it together, mm -hmm. and I know that regardless of gluing it together, it's in a swamp; it's going to get water in it. Yeah, but it's just that PV we can show sometime maybe how to do PVC sure. pipe. We've done that many times. Hey, there it is. Look how nice that looks. Right. So this, this trench is a little bit wider. This is where we were digging with the backhoe. Mm -hmm. And you can see the, the backhoe just go right into the roots. That's not a problem there. So the backhoe, we were lucky. We um, were able to borrow it from Jim's dad. Right. So he had a backhoe. Um, if you don't have access to a backhoe, there are places I know you can rent one. There was a place about an hour from our house, so we could have rented one. Yep. But we were lucky that we were able to use. You can rent one, um, borrow one from a friend. Borrow one. Uh, you or can, contract someone. Hire someone to dig a trench sure. for you. You can also even buy one. They're actually, this particular machine is like $12,000 if you want to go and buy one of these. It's not that anyone has $12,000 laying around, but we save thousands of dollars we on this. So if you so have to look at you know all, all your saving, doing stuff yourself, you can totally buy one of these and then just unload it later for yeah. about we'll the same price. we'll go through the prices at the end, right? You have a slide at the end? We have a prices for the installation, the but not the price for the backhoe. But not for the backhoe. More, trenching more. So we're getting closer to the house where I can't even tell where we are. Yeah, we're just laying in all we're the pipe. We're just laying in more this pipe. Is, yep. Laying in more pipe. There's the backhoe. So this is digging down by the street. Hey, there I am. I'm in the trench. You're in the hole. I, I can't. I'm in the. I'm in the hole. I'm in the hole. Guiding, guiding. Well, I think I was probably guiding you, so you didn't hit the flags or that. Right. So part of so, the pipe was already in the hole at this point. So yeah. you're trying to help me not tear the pipe apart. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of trust in that when Trusting. you're standing in a trench and someone's clawing <laughs> back away. <laughs> Oh boy, what happened here? Mud. Mud. So we had done this and you can see it's fall, right? Because you can see the leaves falling sure. and where we live, it gets very, it happened to be a bad rainy fall. And when you live on clay land oh, clay. and clay it rains, it just pools and puddles everywhere. So, so this, this trench here yeah. is a couple, two or three feet deep. Yes. And it completely filled up with water on multiple occasions. So we're down there with a sump pump and a generator yep. pumping out the hole. No. It's completely ridiculous. And over here, there's water inside the pipe, so we're actually sucking out water with, with, the, wet with the wet dry vac. It's, it was really so that when we uh, pulled oh, the wire, the wire's lubricating. You don't want the wire going yeah, through water. Yeah, and you, you, you you'd just be well, more resistance to be pulling it sure, through yeah, yeah, you know, water. Right, sure. Yeah, so we battled water, cold, cold like... 40 degree water yeah, a lot. It's, it's not good. It was very cool. Oh, there I am again. Yeah, you're doing a great job. I'm so here's your two job. pipes. So here's the oh, yeah. little power pipe over here and this is the, the cable pipe on and the I'm other side. And I'm sucking the water out of the two inch pipe. Yep. So there you see go. How, so you can see how. Yeah. This is this is the one down by the street, but completely filled with water. This We're using this foam pad so that we put the uh, sump pump on top of the pad it so that it wouldn't suck up all the silt on the bottom of the, yeah. the, the hole. Yeah, that was actually really Yeah, we emptied this pipe, this hole out many times. Many times, many times. This doesn't, oh, doesn't look fun. Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, this is not easy to do. We spent many, <laughs> yeah. many weeks um, getting very muddy and wet. And yeah, if you don't like mud, then you probably don't want to be digging. Or do it during so. your dry season. Yeah, sure. You know, if we had done it during really hot, dry summer, it would have been... It's easy to say. But we had this is when we had to do it, though. Yeah. So there it is. More water. See how that's like... Five feet deep. No, it's not five feet deep. I'm it's, over. This is pretty deep. This see, is the, at least. The well, you saw I was standing in it before, so I mean, yeah. it's at least it's like three and a half feet deep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's the caution tape that we put up. Right. So we're floating. coming up on their ground here, and then we're kind of making a little turn, and they come up on the side of this pole, and then there's some other um, rules from the from the electric yep. company that tells you how to get the pole and what you have to do to get. Right. To we just that. follow their so rules. Up. But we were just starting now, just trying to get this conduit in. So more. Wet more trenching. Muck, more trenching. There I am, covered in mud. Covered in mud. Mud. I literally mud all over me, like, all the time. We should do a... Here's uh, more mud. We should do an expose. We should. Uh, we should all. do a dr dramatization, a uh -huh. reenactment of Linda in the mud. Yeah.
I was in the mud a lot. Cut, cut, to, the, cut, cut to the mud. Cut to the I mud. I was in the mud a lot. <laughs> there I am, muddy again, covered in mud. Oh, look at this. What happened here? This is the backyard stuck in mud. Stuck in mud. It fell. It like. Yeah, this is like mud. up to the chassis. In like, mud. Yeah, like two feet deep in mud. Mm hmm. And, you know. More mud. More mud. Covered in dirt. Not fun. Hey! We're actually getting somewhere now. It's a so sunny day now. Look in. at that. Uh, you can see this, you know, we have the generator out here to, to empty out the water out of this this hole. We've got these are two different reels of uh, the 350 MCM cables, and we're pulling them into the, the pipe at the same time, pulling them all together. Mm -hmm. So we got them set up on my trailer here, and um, I actually rented these stands. These stands, I didn't know how in the world we were going to do this. So you got the... But I rented the stand from the from guy. From the same electric Yeah, from the, from from the, the company guy. that sold us the cable. Right. So you should find out about that, because that was... That was a lifesaver. Well, it helped it spin. Yeah, it just helps you spool. It spool just spins it. it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is, we made some kind of weird contraptions here. So we're kind of parked down the street. Yeah. And Oops. then we have these wires going down. We just wanted to lay down the, the, the tarp and stuff so that it wasn't getting dirty and being scraped oh, yeah. and pulled into the pipe. And then down here, you can't really see it, but there's a, a contraption that we that we built, uh, which I'll call sure. like a fair leads, mm -hmm. like the way that, like rollers, so that when the pipe, when that wire comes down it gets kind of funneled down into this small area, mm -hmm. area so it can go into the pipe without hitting the edge of the pipe or chafing or something like that right. so we actually made something actually we can we can do a video on that thing because sure. that was kind of a weird device yeah. we we built to get this get the help get the wire into the pipe right and we had to put that orange fencing around the three foot water hole yeah safety first safety first so that our neighbors didn't like yeah. fall into the yeah abyss. yeah is that your, that's your contraption? That's so this part is a different your, contraption. This is a different one. So on the other end, we were pulling pulling a, a there's a cable coming out through the pipe here on mm -hmm. the far side. So this is 400 feet up the driveway. So we went like about 400 feet, and then we took another after we took it out here. We pulled all the cable all the way through, and then we did another pull going this way for another like 250 feet. But this cable, we didn't want it digging into the ground. We wanted the the, the wire to come up and not be scraping all the dirt right. and stuff. So we made this silly contraption here, which basically just is a roller on bearings and pulled the to, to pull that wire up over. Maybe maybe this is needed. Maybe it wasn't. And it's just that we didn't. You know, it was just in trying to avoid a messy, messy, horrible you know job. I mean, this this cable is really expensive. Well, yeah, and you don't want it rubbing so you against don't want to be a sharp rock. With, yeah, you don't want it tearing through the ground because yeah. if you like. Scrape like the insulation oh, on that. I it's not good. Imagine having to redo that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's the same sort of same picture. Same picture, yeah. just a different view. So over here, oh, this cable, okay. you can see. Doesn't okay. matter. This is fine. Next slide is fine. Okay. So this cable here, you can see the cable is off attached to the tractor. So there's a lot of weight here. It's thousands of pounds, literally thousands of pounds of cable that we're pulling off these reels. Yeah. And you're not going to just grab onto this thing and start pulling it through mm -hmm. because it's just Can't not possible. It. Nope. So if if you're in certain industries they'll do like uh, they'll put a scale on here so that you don't pull it too hard and you know how hard you pulled your cable to make mm -hmm. sure you didn't stress it or something like that but right. we didn't do that we just hooked up to the tractor here and we ended up pulling it through mm -hmm. there you go we just hooked it right up on a chain to the to the ball hitch keep okay. going so that pit that hole right here is like over here so this cable is running way over here like hundreds of feet in the back of me going through around like a pulley on a tree and then I'm coming back towards where I'm pulling it from. Keep going. Yep. So actually, yeah, so I ended up getting back to where this hole was. You can see that That's the cable's the cable. coming What's out coming of the out pipe now. now. Yeah. So you had to get all the pull rope through first or pull cable, I guess. Right. So we originally first. had a nylon rope, uh, not poly, no, polyester no, no, rope inside the hole mm -hmm. when we first oh, yeah. when we first put it in. And getting, mm -hmm. actually, we should do something about that because that was not easy. Yeah. Getting the polyester... That's why we were taking I the water. I use the vacuum cleaner for we're that We're taking too. the water out of the pipe so we can get the polyester rope Through. into the pipe. Right. Actually, first it was a fishing line. We got a fishing line to the pipe with a giant foam ball that yep. we blew through with the vacuum cleaner. Yep. Took the fishing line to pull through a poly line. Yep. A rope. And then we took pull the that. rope to pull the to cable. pull the eighth inch cable. And then we took the eighth inch cable to, to pull, pull the, the electrical wire. wire. So you kind of got to stage your way up here. I mean, yeah. maybe you could have skipped a step, but you, you just can't. You're not going to be pulling through. You know a wire with fishing line so you no. got you got to make your way up yeah. so and then over here in the in the costs i think we talked about a little bit but over mm -hmm. here there's like these little finger trap type things oh, that yeah. grab onto your wire and the kind of you just slip them on there just wrap it up with black tape really really good yeah, and then it just it, it holds on really well yep so yep still now we're pulling 
we're pulling all the wire out of that uh, through the pipe because we're still you know have to take 250 feet here before we run that second that right second line. before we can run yep. the second line so this is at the very beginning we're down by the street so it's going to show us the wires going down and this is that truck. device i was talking about that kind of is fu- you know funneling all these wires mm-hmm. into the into the pipe <clears throat> That's the that's about we're about halfway done. You can see the yep, the wires coming off the spool. Yep. And that's the contraption through the tree. This is so actually a different like, contraption. Oh, yeah. So we had done one over and then we had this was a second one. We we're pulling this is the second pull that we were doing. Yeah. And I ran out of place here because there's like a little cliff here. So we attached this this thing to a tree and now we're kinda of pulling off at a different angle. Yep, He's more done. mud. So this is this is actually done. So this is coming at four hundred feet here, and then once right. I pulled it through the tractor, this came around this corner here, and then then this is it. So this is open. Theoretically, this you know water can get in here, but it can also get out here. We this right. we filled this back filled this with sand. Yep. So that would hopefully drain a little better. Yep. Oops. Oh mercy. We're stuck in the mud again. Back in the mud. So. Digging this trench is, yeah. is really not good, especially for, for a clay. Because what happens when you when you dig through the clay, it's really hard, but then it gets really soft and friable, right? Mm-hmm. So then you have like this two-foot-wide, three-foot-wide trench that uh, is like soup. Mm-hmm. So you drive across it, <laughs> and sooner or later, even this machine, this machine is not heavy. It's so this is like a bulldozer. 6, yeah, this is this is in the back of This is a bulldozer. Or something like this. That's not that yeah, heavy. this like went right into this hole, and... And this, uh, if we didn't have the backhoe, this would have been here. It would that, still be, be here today. Yeah, 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 this thing was stuck, stucker than stuck. And when you think about, like, cost, if you're, see, we did this ourselves to help decrease costs. Like, if you had, if you had paid a contractor to do this and their piece of equipment got stuck, I mean, you'd be having to pay for yeah, them knows? also to come out and tow them. I mean, it, it would have been, I can't even imagine the cost of having to deal right, with that. Right, so this is another machine we borrowed. Yeah, it's his dad's. And this thing, another. it's like a $10,000 unit. It's not It's not super expensive. No, but. but it does the job. It breaks a lot. They all break a lot because they're not brand new, but yep. is what it is. It's better than nothing. Better than doing by hand. No! So same thing here. So there's a there trench here, and we dug this trench. It was really, really soft in here. So as soon as I try to drive across it, all the way down she to was, the axle. She fell back in. Yeah. This is, this is what we do. We do all the mud. Hey, back to electrical drawings. Right. So What's this is this? this is on the electrical, uh, on the actual on pole. Your... So when we were down at the, at the end, we pulled the wire all the way through um, at the end. This tells you how you need to connect that. Uh, that oh, yes. The first, basically, you have to connect that four-inch tubing up to the, the pole. So you can see kind of here, this is looking down, and there's like these cross braces you can buy, and this is like the four-inch tube that you kind of attached to that and then it goes up the pole on these little standoffs here and they say you're supposed to put you know the electrical would be on this side by these and then if you have like if you look here one of the notes says this thing here is like an electrical i mean the uh the, the, the cable okay the cable, yeah, right, so right. the cable one's kind of like on the other side of the pole you usually don't run at the same the same mm-hmm. location mm-hmm. and this also gives you a capability to put other stuff up that pole too telephone uh, like if you had our i mean no, people usually well if you had another another phone, person that once used that telephone oh, pole that's true. And, and you had another right. power power line that you're gonna put into that area mm-hmm. so this is again that's from the same manual tells us you how to push on the pole so we actually just did the first section and then we we had we had to buy all the material but then we left the material at the end of the driveway and then when the electric company comes they use they the parts that parts. you buy and uh, and put it up to the rest of the pole, and then yeah. they'll put in the transformer and whatever they need to do. Yeah, and they were great. Everything was fine. Sure, it worked fine. So this is where the the, bull, the the bulldozer was in the pit earlier. It was like right through here. So kind of flattened it out the best we could, and then we had the geotextile mat because even though originally we were going to run the electrical line kind of like around this way, right? Mm-hmm. And then we said, "Geez, it's so much shorter if we kind of go this yeah, way." Yeah, cut through. It's just a turnaround in our driveway. Well, it wasn't originally going to be. Well, a turnaround. What was it supposed to be? So I after we, more after we did this, we're just like, we already have this, you know, this space cleared out. Why don't we just put a driveway in there? So and we I laid down the geotextile mat, and now instead of our driveway being a dead end, it's like it's a circle. It's a nice little turnaround. And it's, it's it's almost crazy to think that we didn't have that because I not using that. the turnaround is is like we'd have to be all three point turning all the time. Yeah, like trying Austin to get Powers in there. Yeah, trying to all the time. And we, we have a lot cut, of cards we too. Cutscene for Austin Powers. Yeah, we have a lot of cards too, so it would have been a pain, right. you know. So then, these are the cable guys. Okay. So telecommunications. So this is interesting. Yeah. The, the the cable guys came out. I don't know if this is typical or not, but the installation was completely free. Yeah. 
It was. Them yep. pulling the line, putting the line to the wire in. So these guys, two or three yep. guys came out and they ran like they ran the lines down mm-hmm. down into this power lines, ran to our pole, ran it down the pole, ran it in the pipe. Yep, they pulled it out. And they pulled it all the way through the pipe. Just and, this little uh, box. Into a little box off the side of our house, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's more. Oh, look yeah. So they just laid this. They just put this put this roll right in the middle of the street, and they yep. were just working they with just that right pulled. there. Yeah. Yep. So here we are up at the house. Yep. So this is that box that Linda was just yep. talking about. So look, the the cable guys came up through here, and they kind of went over to here, and then this is like in this is gonna live here forever. Oh yeah, that box just and stays here. And there's just a connector in here, an amplifier, I think, and there's a huge cable, a huge. I don't know, it's like a one inch coax cable that comes into here and then it transfer and transfers Form, over yeah. to like a regular size coax regular cable. size coax and I can't even never think of the name of it but regardless and then from here it goes through a different pipe up to the house right so we can we will continue that after so they did that part and then we continued right and then we did the last like 20 we feet. did the last yeah yeah, yeah maybe 50 feet I don't know yeah. so, so we had a measure yeah so we just Wanted to uh, document how, where these pipes were on, when we were underground, so we took some pictures here. But right, so you get the foundation of the house. So here's the foundation. We just came in, I don't know, like four feet away, and then yeah. kind of, you know, had to get up to the turn back in here yeah. for that. But again, that that's important in case we ever want to dig again. What if we yeah. ever had to put something in? Yeah, knowing if you know where the wires know, are, I mean, are. document everything, take pictures of everything. I mean, honestly, we weren't even planning on doing this video, but here we are. These pictures are just all pictures that we took when we were there. Yeah. Yep, I took a lot of pictures. Yep. So there we are. So it's coming. So we're working on. Yeah. So here's the electrical line coming in here. Yeah. And then so we have double cable. It's still like, still like, you know, exactly, still over there, and then over here. That's the cable. The cable. Yeah. Right. And so we had to have it come up, and then where was the electrical box? It's over here. Right. right. So, so these I'm guys come the up, and they kind of both, they turn up, and they both go up here. And this picture guy pointed at the screen. Keep going. <laughs> Oh yeah, here we go. So you can see it closer. Yeah, that's a really heavy wire, I should say. That it was really hard. To yeah, there's move. a lot of wires here, and it's really stiff. So the, stiff. It's so hard to move. So this 350 mcm conductors. Each one is 350 mcm's, which is about three quarters of an inch. So you think about three quarters of an inch of aluminum, and then there's mm-hmm. there's six of them. Right. All. So they're not kind of all wound up here. That was hard. And you know we should take a note here. You see that the little, that's the second time we've used a blue fo- a foam mat yeah. that used to be in our kids' playroom. The flooring. Don't throw those away if you have those. They <laughs> yeah. we use them all the time. Yeah, we really do. Um, yeah, when you're working on a car or something, or you don't want something to get scratched up. They, right, this they is just do. to keep all the cables off the ground. Yeah, they do come in handy. Oh no, we have a green one and a blue one. Yeah, we're doing good. Yeah, we use these pads all the time. It's the best thing ever. Way cheaper than having to buy like some. Yeah. <laughs> some that meant yeah some foam pads all right so that's um same thing so we're pulling up to the house yep now we're trying to figure out the turns like trying to figure out how we were going to turn it in before we glued the pipe together right to make it up to the house here i am holding i'm holding the big four inch electrical pipe so he, jim could take a look and to make sure that we were in the right positioning right. and you can see here we put in the uh, insulation when we were down we there did, put yeah. that insulation at the same time yeah because we already had it all dug out so we might as well so we did that so now we're yep we got it all backfilled yep and the lines are through yeah we had not that much extra cable so i mean be generous when you're estimating your cable because if you're a foot short you're going to hate oh your my life God, really. so i think we had well, maybe 20 feet extra if that. We bought 1,300 feet, feet, so it would be 650 and 650, and then maybe we had 20 feet extra. Yeah. So it was 640 or 630. But yeah, we were close. Yeah, make sure you get your, your measuring tapes out yeah. there. You always give yourself a little bit of breathing space. Absolutely. So, yeah, we cut off, we cut off you know, the last few yeah. feet because uh, we, we knew we'd, we definitely at this point didn't need Right, because that, that part had to go into the electrical box, and you didn't need to, you know, try to loop in 20 feet. Sure, yeah, yeah, You yeah. know. So we got, yeah, right, so... Um, I don't even know what that is. I I don't know what this is. Oh, that's the that's the rope that from the cable company. I know that. That's that's the cable company's pole line. Oh, this is that green box. That yeah, this is the green the box. Outside, yeah, right? that's the so cable company. So they pulled company's. a line in here, and then we were pulling a line we out here out. to somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. So that is. Yeah, because we didn't use that flat um, rope. Okay, so yep. so here we're just flattening out the driveway. Trying so to refinish the this driveway. This maybe isn't the greatest idea, but for this portion of the the run is actually underneath the driveway. So if we ever yep. wanted to go in there again, we'd we have, have to, to move the driveway. driveway. But the whole point of putting the condo is that you're never going to have to go in there again. Right. 
Right, if we had to, we have to, but we're not going to have to. Yeah. No. All, All right. right. So there's requirements about where, how high this meter has to be off the ground. So we're yeah. trying to estimate where the ground is going to be. Yeah, after you backfill, like after we actually get after the After we land backfill. In, yeah. And then is there going to be a step here? And then if you're standing on the step or is there going to be a platform here? How right. high is it going to be from the ground? Because this has to be, I think it's like... I think what it was. Five to six feet or something like that. It has to be like almost at about eye level. It can't be down the ground. It can't be way up in this. Because right. someone has to be able to go up and look at it. Sure, sure. So I'm here trying to figure out if this and pipe I'm is too pictures. long or too short or whatever. And I'm just taking pictures. Yeah, so here, here we're trying to see if, it, if I put it a little lower. Here, and know. then here, whatever again. So we we're trying to figure out where it was going to go. And also where it wasn't going to look ridiculous. Yeah. Well, it's the side of the house. So hey, this, we decided. So this, yeah, so this box is gigantic. It's and, so heavy. And there's a reason why we got this box. It's because it was the only box we could get that supported 200, 200 amp service. Amps. This actually supported 400 amp service. But it's the only box that was big enough to support all these these uh, six conductors coming in. Right. And being able to, to mount on these buses. So It's a the, huge electrical box. These boxes, the right, have uh, ratings. And the ratings will tell you if it if it can do what, you, what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nope. Oh, where are the kids? Where are the kids? Here's one. Here's one. So that's the inside of the garage, up the upstairs. Right. There's one. There we go. There's the other. other. So yeah. they're happy and safe. <laughs> Safely playing with their Nerf guns. So. So this is right underneath the electrical this box. This is right underneath the electrical box. And with the tape. And based on that drawing that we showed you earlier, we made this contiguous all the way from one side to the other. And then the electrical inspector came by and said, it can't be contiguous. It has to have a break mm-hmm. so that water doesn't go down the pipe and then up here and get into your right and get into, into your the box. meter box. We didn't know, but we you had well where, where we live, you had to have an inspector. In, um, yeah, whatever the inspector twice, wants, the inspector out. gets right. Yeah. So we can talk about nice. that a little bit later. So yeah. to, in order to get this thing signed off, because we we are not professionals, we're not electricians. Uh, where, where you live, we're allowed to do this, but it has to be inspected. Right. Uh, so the state inspector came out and looked at this, said, take off this coupling. So we said, I'm fine. So we said, okie dokie, and we did that. So there you go. That's the same picture, but we took the coupling off. We took off. the coupling off. Yay. Finished. S- yeah, so kind this was of. kind of like another weird thing. I think there's a picture inside about yeah, why so. this weird thing existed here. So this was another thing that we did incorrectly. We didn't The inspector know. told us that we didn't. Let's go to the next slide, see if there's yeah, a picture. Better if not, I'll go back. Right. This one? So, yeah, okay. The wire comes up through the pipe here and connects here. And then this goes through your meter. And then the meter, you know, you take your your mm-hmm. c- cables after the meter, which is a, it's a different cable, but it's yeah, like SCR. It's easier to move. Uh, I think it was a quad uh, cable, so like a, a four zero cable. And then that was originally going through this hole here into the house. Mm-hmm. But this did not go directly into the breaker panel. And because it was just going into the wall, right. you can't have an unfused cable in your wall. So, yeah. We didn't know. Uh, Again, we didn't know. But the guy so, was nice enough to help Right. Us. So if you look over here is where the electrical panel is on the inside. It's actually literally right here. Yeah. So we were going through here and then into the electrical panel. Mm-hmm. But that is not legal, apparently. So we we didn't, instead of move, moving the boxes in relationship to each other, we just said, wait, can we just go out this side here and go into go a little in. LB, go into another LB, and now over here it goes into the electrical panel. And that was okay to and do. And that was okay to do. So it looks a little silly, but it saved us a lot of time. So if you ever yeah. are doing this, we actually intentionally didn't put these back to back, but you really should be putting them back to back. That's exactly yeah. where they belong yeah. so that you can come out of your panel and go right into your, right into your breaker box. Yeah, oh, you live, you learn. Yep. Right, so this, this is the breaker box. In the house. Inside the house, right. Yeah. So, right, those LBs that we just showed you go into right here. Yep. So originally it was going to come over here and then come in, but this is a different way. So this is our power, and the power goes up the side of the box and then loops into your to your feeds here. And then we have all these auxiliary feeds that go off to the house and all these other feeds. And actually, we'll do another video sure. about, like, what are all these different wires? Yeah, how we got... What we size have, yeah. are they? I mean, because every, every circuit has to be sized correctly so you'll right. have 10 gauge circuits like these orange ones and then you'll have six gauge circuits like this this is this black one over the yeah. top i think is yeah a, so like the six stove gauge. needs something different right. and um, and then we have power going out to a workshop right so then you see that different. here so we have a two gauge wire going out to the workshop and actually i think we have a picture of that too yeah we might What's actually this, this is the box this is actually finished with after the we box. cleaned it up yeah so you clean it up so it starts off kind of gnarly and then this is kind of nice yeah it does Looks way better after that. 
Oh, so this, so this is, going is another out. con we need going that goes out to the garage. Right. So this goes out to. Well, I was gonna call it the workshop. It makes it easy. Yeah. So this goes out to the workshop. So this power from the, the line from the house to the workshop. So we had to dig a trench, put another conduit in. Right. And pull in. And this line. was in that other video we had about the the garage that we, had we did. We do. Yeah. If you're yeah. interested in watching how we built how you a build a garage, yeah. garage, we have that too. So I'll put the link to that in the description. Super. So this what's this one then? This is the panel on the. In the workshop. This is the one in the workshop. Right. Okay. So this is 90 amp service, and we have two gauge, uh, two gauge cable here. Okay. And um, I, br I I put this this picture in because I thought we what we need to do is make we need to mention that um, when you have main panels and auxiliary panels, you have to be careful with the way that you ground it, and mm -hmm. there's a special grounding pattern that you can do. So we'll make a video about how you ground. Sure. Auxiliary panels and stuff like that. Okay. So in our design, what we had is one main panel that the power went to, which mm -hmm. is a 200 amp service panel. And then from that panel, there's no such thing as 200 amp breakers. So you take 100 amp breakers and you kind of run them off to wherever, actually in this case, there's 90 amp breakers. Mm -hmm. uh, you run them off to wherever you need. So we have an auxiliary panel in the garage, we have an auxiliary panel in the house, and we have another panel here in the workshop. So from that main panel, you have all these other sp spider circuits. And also there's a lot of other circuits in, yeah. that, in that main panel as well. So time passes, right? So yeah. because of the, because of the uh, regulations in the state, we couldn't get power until the entire right. building was complete. Right. Like oh, the walls right. are in. Sheetrock was in. The, the, sheet the outlets are in. Were... The outlets are in. The outlet cover plates are in. Yeah, the cover Everything plates. is done. Yeah. So we're running off of like you know the generator and like little spotlights and stuff like that, building the entire building, and it was ridiculous. But yeah. But that's that's what you, what you pay for doing it yourself. Right. So this is after everything is done. This was February. At this this point. is this is like yeah. literally like a this week before we moved this in. This is months later. The, they literally like right before we moved or in. Right before we moved in. They're up at, here putting in that transformer. So yep. this is that pole. So this is where we're stuck in the mud, and then we ran off the backside of this pole here. We left the box and stuff for it. them. Yeah, there's that pole. And then yeah. we left all that stuff down in there, and then they, they hooked up the transformer, and they hooked us up to that 10,000-volt line. So right here at, at at this line, this is a high-voltage, you know, high-tension right. line. They're putting the transformer, which brings it down to 240 volts, mm -hmm. and then it goes from 240 volts all the way out to the house. Mm -hmm. That was a nice day. And they put in the meter. They put in the meter. They, yeah. they came up the yeah. driveway, and they put in the meter. And after they put in the meter, they'll lock you here because you're not it. supposed to. They uh, have the key. Yeah, you don't want to be in there anyway. No, we don't. We don't. But that was a really nice day to finally have power and not be running off a generator trying to sure. fix every, you know, work, work on the inside of the house. What's this? So that's it. Oh, hey, that's it. So that's, that's how it. So we did the, it. So Whew. we got here. It might have been Whew. laborious, but we got Whew. here. This is the cost. Um, yeah. So let's move back a little bit. So... Mm -hmm. These are the actual costs we have to install the power. So sure. going from from the telephone pole to the house, sixty six hundred dollars, and a majority of that was the cable. Okay. Yeah. So based on that yeah. first slide, if you aren't going that far, you can save a ton of money on cable. If you're right. running so, uh, oh, a hundred yeah, amp service, yeah, sorry, or if you're only running hundred feet or something like that, mm -hmm. way yeah, way way need... cheaper. So obviously, a majority of our costs in here in, in cable, so four thousand dollars. And then right behind it is the conduit, right? So in, like I said, in some places you don't even need that. So you can actually do this for a lot cheaper if you yeah. have not that far to go or you got to do a direct yeah, lay. Yeah, you do a direct uh, ferry. Yep, you, direct you ferry. It. So, so it cost us 6600 to just put in the underground. Now, we right. were considering, remember, putting the poles was going to be... Right, so if you do the poles, it was going to be $15 a foot for 600-something feet, feet. So it would have been about $10,000. About 10000 for poles. And you know there would have been more cost because it would have been tree cutting down. Sure, yeah. So it would have been more than that. Plus all the trees would have to go down. And we know um, if they did if they did underground, we would have had to do twice as much conduit. So right, it would have been another so fourteen hundred, and it would have been six thousand just to get to four hundred feet. Right. And then we would have to go on for this. So that would have been probably about ten thousand dollars as well. Okay, so, so we saved, saved about four thousand five hundred. Yeah, yeah four hundred about yeah, four thousand dollars. And then this other stuff over here, what do we got? We got. These are all the actual costs oh. for how much we spent with... Uh, oh, the meter box outside, the... Yeah, it's all yep. the, the panels, the yeah, the power panels and actual wiring, how much we actually spent on the Romex. So, so what's the Romex? Hold on, that's the yellow wire. This is all the internal the wires. So this so, is all inside the house, too. So this is the complete total electrical of right. the house? This is, not, this is only the panels and the wiring. Panels and wiring. Okay, so there's a lot of other things, like all the outlets are going to yeah, cost you money. The outlet boxes, that's yep. not included Those here. Those little blue boxes. This is just buying because i bought all the, the wire at the all same together. time so it's all the wire mm -hmm. and all the panels mm -hmm. and that's where this ended up being because there's, there's obviously a lot more cost with you know yeah actually the installation but uh it's another two thousand dollars so this was i was surprised how high this number was i mean i thought it was going to be 
I thought it was going to be less, but, mm -hmm. you know, we went a really long way. Mm -hmm. And um, this, is, this is what it cost. Yeah, but you have to remember, too, that this, we didn't have to pay someone else to do it. Yep. So sure. it if you were, higher, that's the other thing. If, if you were to pay had, someone else to do this, you'd be in for fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. How much an hour? Do they get, exactly? Exactly. But we're also in the middle of the woods, so I mean, you got to you pay a little bit to to be, you know, yeah. further off the off the street. Yeah. Is there another one, or, or is this it? That's it. That's the last. That's, that's it. Last that's line. the last slide. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So if this was helpful, um, maybe give us a like, uh, share, or subscribe. Hit the little notification bell. It'd be great. And if you have any questions about anything that we did, just put it in the comment section and we'll be checking the comments and we'll, um, if there's something in particular you want to see in more detail, we can always do a video to that and link that in the description section or in the comment section for sure. you. Um, in, in all, we've done a lot of, um, building on our own. We've built a three car, uh, garage that we have a video for already we have a long version of it and a short version of it um, we did all the interior work in another building and i don't know we put it in our driveway ourselves so there's a lot of stuff that we've done that we'll be putting videos lots, lots more to come about. so oh and also if you think we completely blew it oh yeah let us know yeah <laughs> <laughs> Let us know. But we have electricity. We're doing just fine. Yeah. And we so passed far, our inspections yeah. just fine. You know, once the inspector came out and had to tell us what we had to do, you know, we, we fixed what needed to be done and then everything right. was Right. He, he did have some he good did. suggestions and yeah. you can't know everything. You know, you can look at the NEC to, to get your, get find out yeah. what the regulations are. But, you know, even to, the, you know, if you're not a professional, there's just some things you're just not going to know. Yeah. And actually, we can uh, do another video about that, about internal wiring and yep. things that things that I didn't know when I read them. I'm like, oh, I didn't know I needed one of those or whatever. Right, or yeah. spacing of things. Yes, there's lots of different stuff. So if this is helpful, please give us a like, subscribe, check, uh, check out our other videos as we get them up, and um, happy building. Good luck.